The former banking sector Supremo is responsible for issuing a series of local bank notes with face values running up to as much as 100 trillion Zimbabwe dollars, but which ended up worth less than the paper on which they were printed due to rampant inflation. His spectacular rise is matched by a string of woes since leaving the Treasury. His plush property is due to be auctioned to recover money for vehicles he purchased in 2009 for a once thriving poultry business. His other known business interests in farming and construction are reported struggling. The debt woes could be linked to the imprudent banking practice witnessed during the Zim dollar era, which led to a number of high profile corporate casualties. Right now, we know that, for example, if we were to, to, you know, to, to, to unearth a whole lot of uh, uh, loans that have been written off through the Reserve Bank that are now being non-performing loans, we would come up with billions and billions, which the chefs, people like Gono, all owe money, which, you know, which was totally abused, and now they are unable to pay back. At the central bank, Gono ventured into quasi-fiscal activities, dishing out agricultural machinery and inputs to new farmers under facilities that were never honored. The liabilities left the central bank $1.3 billion in debt. Gono's successor has tried to clean things up, setting up the Zimbabwe Asset Management Company to buy up toxic loans, which at a high of 25% were weighing down the sector. By June, it had mopped up $528 million worth of bad debt, but its impact has been limited. The issue of trying to clean the balance sheet and reschedule debt works when you have new cash, when you have liquidity, when the machinery is working in order to actually increase the capacity of the companies. And that is not happening for now. Zimbabwe's economy has been starved of capital. Where available, it's at a premium because of the country's high-risk profile. Last year, the central bank brokered a deal with commercial banks to set a cap on lending rates at 18%. Prior to that, borrowers were being charged as much as 30% in what many described as a hangover from the Zim dollar era from which the country was slow to recover. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.